coming up on English Share Talk. As teachers, uh, we're supposed to motivate our students and to get them talking. I, For every teacher that's watching this, I'm actually I'm quite proud of all of you because you. Hi everyone, what's up? I hope your day is going swimmingly. Welcome back to another episode of English Share Talks. And I want to ask you a question. Are you planning to teach English to foreign students? Or are you thinking of ESL teaching as your career? Well, we have a very special guest who is going to share with us his tips, how he teaches English as a second language to his Korean students. And he has been in this industry for like 15 years now, so he has a lot of experiences. Let's learn from him. I'm talking about Eric Oscar Welsh from a YouTube channel called Etiquette, and he's giving tips on how to teach English as a second language. So I'm so excited about this conversation. Let's get started. Today we have another episode of English Share Talks. And uh, today we have um, teacher Eric Oscar Wesh from Etacute. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a cute, and um, in case you don't know, um, it's it's not a secret, but it's uh -huh. it's a cute is educate backwards. Wow. So it's yes. a cute. Yeah, <laughs> that's so witty. Welcome to English Share Talk, Mr. Eric Quash. Yeah, can I call you just Eric Quash or yeah, Eric? Janet? You can just call me Eric. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, you're in Korea right now, right, South Korea? I am. I've been here for a long time, but yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. Do you know Korean already? Uh, I know some Korean, but I, I, I really need to improve it a little bit more. So I, I know a little bit, but not enough to say that, uh, not to, enough to say I'm proud of my ability. So <laughs> okay. I need to practice more. All right. That's cool. So could you tell us uh, a bit about yourself? Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric, and I've been a teacher for 15 years now. Uh, originally, I'm from South Africa. I taught there for a couple of years. I've always been teaching English as a second language. And then I got an opportunity to move to Korea where I started teaching. I taught elementary, I taught middle school, high school, I taught business. And now I'm teaching at a university. Um, here in the center, center of the country. And um, I also started a YouTube channel called Etiquette, where I just share some tips, activities, resources for English teachers. And every week, every Sunday, I have a live stream where I chat to other teachers. And that's that's basically my life story. That's cool. I, you also have a podcast, right? I recently um, listened to your podcast about the um, three C's yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah um actually so um basically what you do is um with uh, um the, the the great thing about youtube is that you can record it and you can put it on on other places so you can put it on a podcast for people that just want to listen and also you can put it on facebook and other um platforms too so um i'm, I'm happy that you heard it on the podcast yeah, yeah that's so cool so i will drop the link of his youtube channel podcast and where you can reach him out just on the description box below. So there, I uh, would love to know how you got into teaching. Well, you know, <laughs> it's it's interesting. Uh, I think every teacher gets asked that and everybody has a unique answer. I think for myself, I've always been drawn towards working with kids and helping people. Um, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And eventually I thought, you know what, uh, the one thing the world will never run out of is the, the, the need for teachers. So I became a teacher and I also knew that by becoming an ESL teacher that I could teach in many countries around the world. Um, at the moment, uh, or, or at that moment, 15 years ago, I had no idea that the internet would become so big because now obviously we are able to teach from anywhere in the world right. to be connected with students. So yeah, I, I think ESL teaching is big and will only increase in the future. Right, that's true. Um, there's really like an increasing trend of um, the needs for English 
um, teachers. So um, you've been teaching English for a long time. What makes it interesting for you? Well, the, the great thing is, um, well, the easiest thing is that the students are always changing. You know, the, the great thing is that you're working with people, you're working with students. Uh, if, if they're um, young, you know, um, teenagers, older, everybody has a unique life story. And the beauty of language is that you teach them using, you know, their previous knowledge and who they are as a person. And it's always interesting because you ask them questions. Uh, the other reason is also, you know, I feel like we are still growing and learning as um uh, uh, as teachers and education i feel we're just at the start and there are so many things that we still need to learn and share um about teaching and english teaching in 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 specifically right and you get to know culture right get to know people um mm. you get to explore the culture itself yeah. right as you teach english as a second mm. language yeah that's so cool and i couldn't agree more that you know, um, every student that you meet, they have interesting stories to share. Right? Yeah, I think, um, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you because you brought up culture. Yeah. You know, I, I think as teachers, we should naturally be inquisitive. We want to ask questions. And one of the wonderful things is with our students, um, you know, you're always asking them, how do you feel about this? How is it in your culture? Especially if you teach ESL, you might be teaching in Asia, in South America, in the Middle East, in Africa, where, um, you know, you can learn so much from other people's culture. So we, sh we should constantly be questioning our students, you know, that that's, should be second nature. Right, yes. And the main goal of um, students who are really um, learning English is to really communicate, to really express themselves. Mm -hmm in that language. All right, I'm actually wondering, because you've been teaching for a long time and you might have encountered beginners, you know, who are mm -hmm. like reluctant to speak the language. Probably they're shy. They have a hard mm -hmm. time talking, you know. So how did you get them talking? Well, do you have like um, methods? Yeah, I think, well, as teachers, I think I'm speaking very quickly, so I'm going to slow down. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so as teachers, uh, we're supposed to motivate our students and to get them talking. I constantly tell um, my viewers too, you know, uh, it's, it's so important that we get our students comfortable and confident in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I like to support my students. Uh, before I start a topic, I, I I try and create. I try to dig in and learn what what previous knowledge do they already have about it, and then I try and set them up for success. So if you have very low stu level students that aren't very confident, now I'm going to find out what do they already know. You know, or, 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 uh, let's say we're teaching a topic. What do they already know about that topic? What pictures or other mediums can I share about the topic that they can create connections to? The more connections they have, uh, I also teach them some vocabulary that they can use. I give them some structures that they can use uh, uh, when they want to answer something. Um, if they're still not confident, I give them, I role model what I want them to do. You know, so I will give them um, example sentences and show them from my life and then I will ask them for theirs. So yeah, as a teacher, we should have very high expectations of our students. We should expect the best, but we should also scaffold the lesson to make sure that every student can achieve that level of success we want from them. So yeah, very important, create those um, connections to the students, to their previous knowledge, and also uh, set them up for success, you know, have ways for them to learn. Uh, I, I think as teachers, uh, I know this answer is going a little bit long, but as teachers, sometimes we overcomplicate things. We make things too complicated because we think the students will be bored or we think that it, it you know, the students um, are at a certain level. So what I would suggest or uh, suggest that most teachers do is, you know, st start at the most basic level and then work from there to make sure the students uh, once they can grab the basics, then start pushing them up. So really, uh, I don't want to say the word dumb it down, but mm -hmm. uh, make it easy for your students uh, at the start. Yes, simple and basic. Mm -hmm. Right. If um, I actually encountered that when I started teaching, actually, personally and honestly, I tend to like uh, make things complicated just to make the class like 
I thought would be engaging, um, mm. interesting, but at, um, it ended up like um, complicated. You know, students are still like, they mm. still cannot catch. And that's what I learned actually mm. to scaffold everything. Simplify. Yeah. To simplify, that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, you know, I, I've got these experiences. I remember my very first class that I taught as a student teacher and uh, I got um, I was told to prepare a lesson and I was just like, I'm going to make the best lesson ever. And I just tried to push in so much information and uh, it just overwhelmed the students and your message is gone. What I think we should do is we should focus the lesson on the students, you know, instead of having these fancy games or interesting lessons. If you have a simple lesson that the students can get to talk about something they, they are interested in, um, it's way better than whatever game or mm -hmm. activity you've got planned for them. Right. And like, uh, it's basically just uh, meet the needs of the student and just to mm. really just get them talking. All right, well, those are really great advice. You know, um, every teacher should try practicing them, applying them in their classes, because mm. uh, we're here to, you know, assist to facilitate the students' um, mm. the learning process. Yeah. Right, so um, a lot of our viewers are actually um, learning english or probably they're learning english because they want to teach english and mm. this is a part of um, teaching english as a second language and probably most mm. of them are going abroad or teaching english online to foreign students so mm. we'd love to know uh, your best tips for our aspiring esl teachers mm. you know from your experiences okay uh the, the most valuable um, information I can tell you is um, don't don't suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, I, I know that a lot of second uh, English second language teachers that might be from another country that where they might not be native speakers, they tend to worry about what they sound like and what they know compared to their native counterparts. Mm -hmm. And I 100% want to say don't even think about that. You know, your, the fact that you, that English isn't your native language already sets you apart that you, you already know how to study it, how to learn it, how to present it. You shouldn't worry about not being a native teacher, a, a native speaker, right? So that's my, that's my most important tip is don't worry about that. You know, um, the students find value in what you offer them. I've seen uh, great native speaking teachers. I've seen amazing non-native speakers. The difference isn't in their speaking ability, but the way that they connect and they facilitate the learning of their students. So first of all, don't have this, oh, I don't think I'm good enough or, you know, have this hang up about it because then you're going to, it, it, it will have this line, lance or the snowball effect. You'll start worrying about things. You'll second guess yourself. You won't enjoy your classes. But if you go into your classes with a positive at, um, attitude and with the mindset of, listen, I'm just here to help my students in the best way that I can. And I want to do it in a way where they are having fun learning and interacting with the language. I will succeed. Now, the problem is, um, that uh, what I've also found with non-native um, English teachers is that they tend to over focus on grammar. They feel like grammar is where they should be teaching, you know, because maybe they don't feel comfortable with speaking or they don't feel comfortable just, uh, you know, flowing with the activity, asking questions and, and jiving with the students. Um, so I want to warn not to focus too much on grammar. If you look at native speakers, most um, aren't that great at grammar. They, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they, they're able to speak. They're able to, to feel comfortable because it's their native language. They didn't have to work for it. But um, I want you to go into your class, have fun, chat with your students. If you don't know something, also that fear of not knowing 
what will happen okay. let that go you know uh, don't be afraid of making a mistake nobody is perfect if you don't know something or you make a mistake in class uh, you know you go and you're like oh I, I made a grammar mistake or my pronunciation wasn't great sure. it doesn't matter you know the, the the your students don't care about that it's um it, it's more important that you provide them with value and you make learning an interactive experience mm -hmm. And it actually it's um, makes teacher a little anxious when students ask them like grammar questions and they feel caught of guard how to mm. answer that right away when they don't have enough foundation about that. And mm. it makes them stressed out actually. And the mm. student is just like waiting for the answer. But then, you know, um, as a teacher, sometimes we tend to be like so pressured about well I, I just i just thought of an idea now i get that question a lot i get a question a lot eric um a student asked me a question i didn't know the answer i get that a lot <laughs> students ask me questions or on my live stream teachers ask me a question and i'm like well <laughs> my advice that i give the teachers initially is just to tell the students be honest say hey, guys i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure about that answer um let me go and research and look it up so that i can give you the exact answer next time we meet mm -hmm. now that is the answer i usually give when somebody asks that but i just had uh, a moment of inspiration where i had an idea let's say we all have cell phones well oh, here's mine we all have cell phones mm -hmm. with the internet there with the answers right at our fingertips but it's difficult to look up the answer if your students are around. So why not play a game? Say, okay, guys, I'm not sure about the answer, but let's see who is faster. I want you to quickly ask each student in this class what their favorite color is. And before you are finished, let's see if I can get the answer before you're finished. So that way the students see it as a race. They have to interview everyone while you can quickly go on and search. <laughs> If the student finishes first, you're like, oh, you got it, but I found the answer. This is the answer and you explain it, right? Or you tell the students, uh, okay, I want you to quickly, if you are one-on-one -on -one with the student, say, okay, I've got these 10 sentences, quickly write down five sentences, change the word, you know, but change it and I'll see if I can quickly find the answer. That way you, because I think a lot of teachers think, you know what, I can't look up an answer right now because I need to keep the class occupied. But that's just some fun games that you play with the students. And they, you know, they, they, they really find that fun. And you're going to look up the answer on your phone while they're busy learning. And yeah, that's just an idea I just had. That's so cool. Actually, I may want to try that too. Um, it's like you're hitting two birds with one stone, right? Um, mm -hmm. Checking the answers and um, letting students do their be, be getting, you know, busy in the class. This really mm. nice, practical and doable for mm. every teacher, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In this pandemic, um, have you ever tried teaching online or like? Yes, uh, we've been forced to go online. Actually, right before, it's, it's funny, um, right before... COVID um, mm -hmm. uh, struck, um, I started interviewing online teachers because I noticed the trend of so many people starting to teach online and I saw the value in, in it. Mm -hmm. So I started interviewing all these teachers on how do they teach online. I was going to make a series of videos based on it. And um, before I could do that, uh, before I could release it, suddenly um, it started and I was forced to go online. So I started using Zoom. I started learning new techniques on how to engage the students online. I've made plenty of videos on activities, how to teach online. And now I don't mind it at all. I can uh, teach, I can teach online as comfortably as I want to, or I can teach in class. You know, I think it's a skill set that every teacher should learn. And those who resist will get left behind. We're, we're learning a lot of new skills on how to engage the students just by teaching online. Yes, flexibility, you know, as a teacher, you have to be flexible. Um, also, lots of online sources right now that um, teachers can use in their classes. Mm -hmm. I actually started teaching online out like back in 2014. I was mm -hmm. like wow. so clueless, you know, what can I mm -hmm. do? 
I need to follow the book or the student will not talk or whatnot. But right now, um, I can confidently like, you know, um, do stuff at the same time while talking with the students because everything is accessible. Yes. Mm. And you can even make the classes engaging and fun. There are lots of online sources for games, you know. What is your main way of, of, of teaching online? Or, or, or in your lesson, how do you, um, you said there are many resources. What do you use for your students? Well, actually, it depends on the students. Right now, I have like um, adults. I'm teaching adults right now. Um, mm. Most of the time, we talk about a certain topic, you know, or I just let them um look at the picture and I'll give them some words and then use the words to um, talk about that picture, something like that, you know, to, because the goal is to keep them talking. And I just, I love that. Based, yeah. mm -hmm, the class, I base the class depending on the student's needs. So if my mm -hmm. student needs to like talk because he or she will migrate, then um, what is the need there? Then that's what we're doing. But basically for kids, you know, I also teach kids. Um, I use some sort of um, games, plenty of games online, like Bamboozled or like Wheel of Names, you know, some sort of those mm. to keep them talking. I also use something like a camera that, you know, you can like effects. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Like that yeah mm -hmm. to keep the students talk i mainly teach chinese kids and it's hard for them to grasp words because of the chinese mm -hmm. characters so they rely on pictures yes. yeah mainly that I've, 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 I've seen some new technology coming out too where uh instead of pictures it's like you get these books and you scan it and it'll have 3d pictures that the Ooh. students can see. Yeah, very interesting. So if they're on their phones, they can basically see a 3D version of it and you can ask them more oh, questions. Yeah, that. mm -hmm. and yeah that's quite interesting. More, like um, there's like a cube and then you just need your phone, especially if you're mm -hmm. teaching science or mathematics. Right. Uh, that one, it makes, yeah, yeah. Also, the power of technology, right? Mm. And, as and we, we as teachers, we've got to use it as best we can, you know, but but it, it still doesn't like you said, there are all these resources. But the, the main thing is engage the students, show them a picture, ask them questions, get them to engage with the la language, you know, uh, bring the grammar in, build their vocabulary, build their confidence and yeah, get them to talk. Mm. Right. Yes, that's so true. That's mainly that. Right now, I actually mostly teach one in one classes. So it's not really like hard to, you know, um, do like breakout rooms or whatnot. Don't need them right now. But yeah, it really depends on just the students needs, you know, yeah. Meeting I think uh, with the, with the one on one. So when you teach one on one, it's it's quite easy. You talk about the students, and you've got all these fun games and things planned for them. But I actually prefer having more students on uh, because Absolutely, you know, I it. yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm going to put you in the breakout room. This is what you got to talk to your friend about, and then I like going to each breakout room, talking to the groups, and then you come back and they give you feedback because you know um, learning is better if it's social and they do it with their friends so instead of asking them oh um what oh, uh, what's your answer you ask what was your friend's answer and it, it almost takes the pressure off of them where they can say oh it's my, my friend's favorite is this you know so i, I actually i think with one-on-ones it's great because you can focus on the student but i prefer yeah. having more students just because of the breakout rooms yes it's so interactive that's true i actually kind of miss it but yeah, with one on one, it's easier and you're just more focused on the students and you, mm. the, their target. You know, it's easy to check their improvements to track, you know, mm. from um, being just speaking like um, broken English to speaking fluent English. You could mm. really easily see it with the one on one classes. Well, yeah, I'm so glad. Actually, I learned a lot from you that I can also yes. apply right now in my oh. teaching. Yes. So do you have any final thoughts, final message to our viewers, like um, to other aspiring ESL teachers out there? Yeah, guys, I think uh, we should be excited. We're, we're at a very exciting point in, in teaching mm -hmm. where teachers are having to learn new skills and 
um, having to learn online. We're, we're going to, we need to find all these other ways of engaging our students. And we are the first generation doing that. You know, we are the pioneers going into the Wild West or, you know, learning all these new skills. So if you can, um, for every teacher that's watching this, I'm actually, I'm quite proud of all of you because you are the ones searching for new information. You're trying to make connections with other teachers and trying to find knowledge to apply in your classes. So I want to say uh, I've got a massive amount of respect for everyone who's still watching this. If you're still watching this, smash that like button. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, uh, guys, uh, thank you so much for putting your, uh, putting, giving your time and trying to learn because we're all in this together and we, we're here to support each other and to learn together. Wow, that's so empowering. Thank you so much, Eric, for that. Yeah, so would you like to uh, promote your channel? What are the things that we can expect? You know, do you have any other uh, content <laughs> to share? Yeah, um, so my channel's name is Etiquette. It's Educate Backwards. And I've I put out videos and resources for teachers, classroom management, um, activities for, for teachers. Uh, I really enjoy it. And every Sunday I have a live stream. Uh, it's at um, 1 p.m. GMT. And everyone's welcome to come and join and to chat either on Facebook or YouTube. Um, and then in the future, so I'm just putting out content to help teachers. And in the future, I think I want to make a series on teaching grammar. So, yeah, that's what I'm busy with, um, constantly just doing that. And exactly. yeah, thank you to, if, to yeah, if everybody wants to check it out, please do. And thank you for having me on, Janet. I had a great time. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eric, for accepting my invitation. So don't forget to um, subscribe to It's a Cute. Yes, that's his YouTube channel. So you can learn a lot of um, teaching tips, especially teaching ESL. Yes, when you're beginners, um, he's there to help you build that confidence teaching English. Also try to check out his podcasts. Um, it's also Eat a Cute, right? Eat a Cute, uh, right. Yeah, Eat a Cute uh, podcast. Uh, he's also on Instagram and that is Eat a Cute One and also mm -hmm. on Facebook. I'll drop the link of um, his accounts right there on the description box so it would be easy for you to access them. So thank you so much, Eric, and I really enjoy this conversation. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and yes, yeah, subscribe to our channel, English Shara, and we hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.